glass as he nervously fidgeted with his napkin. Oh, no, not again, she thought squirming in her chair. When Kate asked him twice what was wrong, all he would say is nothing. That's when she felt a stabbing pain in her stomach because she knew what was coming next. As the knot in her stomach began to twist, she decided to try something a little weird, something I taught her earlier that day. Slowly, she took a deep breath as she let slip out three innocent, playful words, and then, all of a sudden, she saw the sparkle return to John's eyes as she hadn't seen for weeks. For the rest of the evening, he couldn't stop smiling and touching her as they talked. It was like a switch had been flipped, and it didn't stop that night, because six months later, he got down on one knee as he smiled and asked her to be his wife. Hi, I'm Bob Grant, and today I'm going to share with you the real reason why men suddenly break up with amazing women, especially when everything's going good, and how whispering these three trigger words into any man's ear literally, literally changes his brain chemistry, which causes him to constantly daydream about you. When you sit next to him, his pulse will start racing as he hangs on your every word. Now, I know that sounds crazy. Believe me, most of the time trying to motivate a man with words works terrible. But that's because the words women use work on other women, but often fall on deaf ears when tried on a man. As a relationship coach for the past 20 years, having taught over 4,000 women this very secret and receiving countless wedding invitations over the years, I'm still pleasantly surprised when a client comes back, weeping with joy, telling me she couldn't believe that it worked like Ashley, who was burnt out from a string of relationships with non-committal guys, but then used these three simple words on a man she was falling for, even though it felt completely unnatural. And now, she's engaged. Or Stacy, whose airplane pilot boyfriend used to call her every day, telling her how much he loved and missed her, but then suddenly stopped after one fight. In fact, they started fighting a lot after that. She thought she lost him until she sent these three words in a text, and before she knew it, he texted back with an apology wanting to make up. Then there's Alicia, who was a divorced single mom with four kids. She thought she would never find a man again. Who would date me, she cried in my office, but armed with what I taught her and those three magic words, within six months, she found the love of her life, and she got married in Maui, her dream wedding spot. You see, once I discovered these three simple trigger words, I realized they activate a series of bonding stages inside a man's mind. And without him realizing what's happening, he develops an overwhelming need to be with you and you become the only woman he wants, now and forever. Thoughts of all other women are repelled, as if they never existed. Now to be clear, these three words have nothing to do with talking about the relationship, asking for commitment, or even getting him to talk about what's on his mind. In fact, you do not want to do this at all. These touchy subjects put pressure on a man. And if you've ever been in a good relationship where the man pulled away, ghosted you, or blamed you, strung you along, or hurt you in any way, there's a good chance you may have consciously or unconsciously put direct pressure on him. These three trigger words are subtle, indirect, and almost hypnotic, putting a man into a trance-like state, hungry for you. Now, before I share with you how this works, I need to tell you about Sherry. Sherry was a client of mine, one of my earliest and it's because of her that led me to discover the crucial stages a man must go through in order to bond with a woman and the secret trigger words that activate these bonding stages. She literally changed everything about how I work with women and help them with men. Now here's what's strange about Sherry. Sherry was a stunning hairdresser. Blonde, blue eyes, bubbly, the whole package. She looked like Miranda Lambert. What's more, she smiled often and was easy to talk to. And as you can imagine, she had no trouble getting dates. She'd had several boyfriends by the time she came to see me, but here's the thing. Here's what's weird about Sherry. Her relationships never lasted beyond six months. And it wasn't because Sherry got bored. It's not because she was a diva. She's not. She generally wanted those relationships to work out. By all accounts, she was everything a man would want. Beautiful, smart, and loyal to her man. But in the end, they would always dump her. And she couldn't figure out why. It was like her relationships had an expiration date. And Sherry really did try. Post-breakup, she would dissect what led up to it. She would ask herself if she was too needy or clingy, if she talked about the relationship too much, or if she asked too many questions. She'd think to herself, maybe I was a bit too much here. And for the next relationship, she would fix it, improve herself, and try harder. She even dated down because her friends and family said she was being too picky. She wasn't, but none of it worked. Come the six-month mark, almost every time the boyfriend would act all funny, there'd be a fight, and poof, Sherry was single again. So one afternoon, she comes to my office. She's been dating Dan for five months now, and she's freaking out. She's freaking out not because she's about to hit the cursed six-month mark. She's also freaking out because she really likes Dan. Dan is everything she wants in a man. She thinks, no, she knows he's the one. 
and she's feeling that awful sense of dread that for no good reason at all, Dan's going to leave her in a month. History would repeat itself. So Sherry tried harder. She went down her checklist, making sure she wasn't being clingy, invasive, or anything. But that's when something hit her and scared the living daylights out of her and drove her to me. You see, after triple checking her list and being ruthlessly honest with herself, she could not figure out a single incident where she put pressure on Dan. She'd been, by all accounts, the perfect girlfriend. Or had she? The creeping doubt snuck in. Maybe there's something wrong with her at a root level. Maybe she's boring. Maybe she's just not lovable. Maybe she's just not enough for any man to stick around with. And here's the thing. When Sherry showed up in my office and told me everything about her relationship with Dan and all of her past boyfriends, I looked deep into her eyes and knew. She wasn't lying. She wasn't bluffing. She was as honest as she could be. There was nothing wrong with her. And that's when I freaked out too. Why? Well, I have a confession to make. You see, at the time, I wasn't a very good relationship coach. In fact, the first six years of my career, when I worked with women in their relationships, it was often hit or miss. Truth is, I was trained as a therapist. And if you've ever been to therapy, you know all they ever talk about is you. It's your fault. It's your past. It's your childhood. You have some issue to work on, something to fix, or some other deep-seated insecurity. You need to be more positive, more confident, and be more, or some flavor of that. And that's what I did. I focused on treating the individual woman, working on her, as if it was always her fault when the man left. Sometimes this worked. Sometimes it didn't. I wasn't happy with the results. It wasn't reliable, and frankly, I wasn't sure if what I was doing actually helped the women who came to see me. Now, don't get me wrong. Therapy, psychology, and counseling have their place. But from my own experience, working with thousands of women, it just didn't help with unlocking a man's heart, getting them to open up and bonding with you. What actually worked was something else altogether, something that works on any man regardless of who you are as a woman. So back in my office, as I sat there listening to Sherry, seeing this incredibly attractive, confident woman talk, for the first time in my career, I was just dumbfounded. As a therapist, I could usually zero in on something and work on that. But with Sherry, I simply didn't know what to say to her. There was nothing wrong with her. Everything I learned as a therapist seemed wrong. That's when I threw a Hail Mary and I asked her to bring Dan into our next session. I'd never done that before. I never asked a client to bring in their boyfriend or husband. And to be completely honest, I was really just buying time. So the week after, she brings Dan in. And everything Sherry said was dead on. Dan was a great guy. I could see the two of them getting married, buying a house together, having kids, the whole nine yards. But something was missing. I could tell Dan wasn't fully committed. What was missing, though? I couldn't crack it. I asked Sherry to leave the room. And when Dan was alone with me, I outright asked him, what's going on? Dan tells me he loves Sherry. He wants to be with her. He can see she's the perfect woman. He tells me he can't see himself with anyone else. But something is holding him back. He can't put a finger on it. And it's not like he has commitment issues either. He's been in long-term relationships before. He even almost got married once. So at this point in the session, I'm freaking out. What in the world is going on? Here are two human beings in love with each other. They want to spend their lives with each other, ready to go all in, but couldn't commit. Something was going on here. I thanked Dan for coming in. I almost told Sherry that I couldn't help her and she should fire me. But I looked at the two of them together and I refused to give up. This was wrong. My training was not enough. There had to be another answer out there. So I sheepishly asked Sherry to give me another week. I needed more time. I was ready for her to say no, but to my relief she agreed. And that's when I hunkered down to figure this out. And I said earlier, I knew therapy wasn't the answer. I had to go outside of my comfort zone. So I started reading all the relationship books out there. There wasn't a lot 20 years ago. Remember, this was before the internet got big. You had books like The Rules, Why Men Love Bitches, and How to Succeed with Men. And a lot of these books talked about playing games, improving yourself, being more positive and confident. The magazine articles I read were worse. They just talked about buying new clothes, getting a new hairdo, or spicing things up in the bedroom. I was hitting a wall and getting desperate. But I knew what I was looking for wasn't a fantasy. After all, I'd had several friends who were now loyal, devoted boyfriends and husbands. Men who I personally knew used to laugh at the idea of settling down and dated multiple women at the same time. What's more, the women who finally captured their hearts, some of them were average looking. Others were not the fittest, but something about them flipped a magic switch in these men. And it was at this point I decided to call up one of these women. I had to know the secret. At first, she was extremely suspicious. To her, I was Bob, her husband's friend. We barely shared words between us, but I had an in. You see, she was a relationship coach of sorts, too. So I talked shop with her. We talked about clients and things about the job we hated. 
I kept trying to lead the conversation to how she turned my friend into a monogamous, loyal, and devoted husband who doted on her. And after several minutes, I didn't think I was going to get anything out of her until finally she said, Okay, Bob, you want to know the secret? My palms were sweating. My heart was pounding. This was it. Here was the secret. She said, Get a copy of this book. It's called Hot Monogamy. I thanked her. We hung up. I ran to the bookstore as fast as I could. I started reading it right then and there. At first, I thought she led me on. The book seemed um, useless. But then I got to the last chapter, and something stopped me. It was this one simple insight which would flip my world upside down, change my practice forever, and lead me to discovering why some men commit to a woman while others don't or can't. It was earth-shattering to me because for the first time in my life, I finally understood it had nothing to do with the woman. It was simply not her fault because of this one reason no one had ever described. Men bond differently than women. And more importantly, love happens in stages. Let me repeat that. Men bond differently from women, and love happens in stages. Once you understand that simple truth, you will never wonder again why suddenly a man turns distant, cold, or breaks up with you. The one simple insight led me down a rabbit hole of research into the physiological, brain patterns, and deep psychology of how men tick and why they bond to some women but not others. And today, I can boil it down to three scientifically-based insights for my clients. These three insights have helped over 4,000 other women just like you find the love of their life. Trust me, I've been invited to more weddings than I can count now. And I'm going to share these insights with you right now. And once you get it, you too will never be hurt or confused by a man ever again. What's more, you'll know exactly how to capture a man's heart, how to escalate their desire and devotion to you as you activate their bonding stages at the right time. But before I get to that, the first thing you need to understand is men have stages of bonding. They don't truly fall in love and devote themselves to a woman until they progress and go through each and every stage in order. Anytime a man breaks up with a woman, ghosts her, drags on a relationship, and refuses to commit, or even cheats on her, it's because they have not truly gone through the bonding stages. I've seen this in marriages gone wrong, and I've seen it in engagements that last forever. Until the man truly bonds with the woman, there is no devotion, no loyalty, no commitment. Even if they say, I love you, or I want to spend my life with you, truth is, most men themselves aren't aware of it, or know about these bonding stages. Many of them think they're in love when they haven't gone through all the stages, and they end up breaking up with a woman, thinking they've fallen out of love when really they haven't truly bonded. Remember, men are just not in touch with their feelings, much less the deeply seated bonding stages going on in their brain. This brings me to my second insight. insight. There are five stages of bonding for a man. Five. The first two are adrenaline-based infatuation. It's exciting. It's fun. They can't keep their hands off you. They love chasing you. And many even go so far as to say, I love you. But unfortunately, They're not in love, even if they think they mean it, even if they believe it from the bottom of their heart. You see, these early stages of bonding is all heat and no glue. What's worse is a lot of women believe the man. He said the L word, didn't he? What happens is the relationship loops in these first two stages for a while, but eventually every relationship has to move to stage three, which is also my third and most important insight for you. Stage three is where the man hits a roadblock. Stage three is where the man comes down from his high. Stage three is where the man starts to doubt. He doubts himself. He doubts the relationship. He doubts even the woman. He wonders if you're really the one, even if they've already said, I love you. And it is at this exact point that the woman has her golden chance to use this doubt to create a deep and lifelong bond. You see, stage three of the man's bonding stages is interesting. They honestly don't know what's going on. You may recall, when I talked to Sherry's boyfriend, he couldn't put a finger on why he couldn't commit. It was because he was in stage three. And this is where so many women innocently try and help a man the wrong way. Stage three is a fragile, delicate time in a relationship. 98% of women don't know what to do here. If you've ever complained about not knowing what guys are thinking and why they're acting this way, it's most likely you have a man in stage three. This is the stage where they may start acting out like not answering your calls or texts as quickly, or picking fights over the dumbest things. They may even say things they regret later. The one tip you must take from this, if anything, is that it's not you. There's nothing about you to fix. You can't become better. You can't be more. Giving more is useless. The problem is it's them. All men hit stage three eventually and pull away from the relationship, some more dramatically than others. However, there are things you can do. So if you carefully guide him over this stage three hump into stages four and five, you have helped him transition. 
from the adrenaline-based infatuation of the early stages to the more solid, sticky, true bonding based on endorphins. It is in stage four that a man begins to truly bond with a woman. He needs your help in stage three because he wants a long-term committed relationship with you, one where he has deeply bonded with you, where he can finally rest from his long search to find you. So once I had a good grasp of the bonding stages, I asked Sherry back to my office, ASAP. I just couldn't wait to share my new revelation. At first, she didn't understand what I was telling her because everything I said was the exact opposite of all the advice out there. Advice that told her to be more, be better, be positive, independent, confident. And how was her fault? It took a while for her to accept the possibility that it was Dan that needed to change, not her. And not change like turning a bad boy into a good man. She tried that so many times. But instead, guiding a man through stage three so he gets past this hurdle and finally commits to you and you alone. However, there was a challenge to all this. We couldn't just sit Dan down and tell him about stage three. It doesn't work that way. You see, not only is stage three hard to get through, what my research told me was men need to think it was their idea on when to move past stage three. They need to believe they came up with the idea. What's worse, men don't know when they're in stage three. Heck, they don't even know about the bonding stages. And that's when I asked Sherry to help me out. We were going to secretly experiment on Dan. We would come up with ways that would, one, make Dan acutely aware he was in an unpleasant stage in his life, and two, give Dan the tools and strategies to get past stage three, without him knowing we were feeding him these tools. What's more, we were going to do it in a way that would make him think they were his ideas all along. If you ever saw the 2010 movie Inception with Leonardo DiCaprio, where they plant the seed of an idea in a man's dreams, then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. This sounds incredibly difficult, but it's not once you understand how to do it. And also, this might sound like we're playing games with a man, but it's not. Because, as I said, this is simply how a man is psychologically wired. There is no other way to get past this system and to get him to move past stage three in any other way. Now, some of the tools I mentioned were the trigger words I talked about at the beginning of this presentation. There are others, and I'll share all of them with you in a moment. But back to Sherry. As you can imagine, she hesitated on trying these tools I came up with. After all, she didn't want to treat Dan like a guinea pig. I totally understood. But because her relationship was nearing the accursed six-month mark, she felt like she was going to lose Dan anyway. So she decided to give it a shot. And so she did. As I predicted, it was incredibly awkward and unnatural at first. But then something clicked with Dan. She noticed he stopped what he was doing and looked at her with the same tender eyes she had fallen in love with as she felt a warm sensation flow through her heart. In fact, he became desperate and felt like he would lose her if he didn't act fast. What's more, what he was feeling wasn't the thrilling, fever-pitched, adrenaline-based infatuation he felt when he first met Sherry. No, this was different. It was the slow, burning passion that only a man truly bonded and in love develops, and the endorphin-based love that can burn for a lifetime. He told me later, I felt like I couldn't live without her. Notice the difference? It wasn't I couldn't keep my hands off her. It was I can't live without her. That's when I knew Dan was deeply embedded in stage four now and moving quickly into the deep commitment of stage five. The two of them showed up a couple of months later, Sherry with a ring on her hand. I was elated for them. What I discovered with Sherry were the bonding stages all men secretly have and the tools you need to guide men through the difficult stage three, a stage all men must go through before they truly, fully bond with a woman. Now, Sherry, she's what I call a sneezer. She's the kind of person that tells everyone she knows when she has an experience, good or bad. And after what I pulled off with her and Dan, she told everybody at the salon she worked at. She told all of her friends. She told every one of her clients, including all the ladies at the Creative Loafing newspaper. And her friends told other friends. In short, my small private coaching business went viral. And this was before Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And now, 18 years later, with over 4,000 happy clients and countless wedding invitations and thank you letters, I still think back to that first day Sherry showed up in my office and how my business got turned inside out and upside down because of her. In fact, I've been thinking a lot about it recently and all the other Sherrys out there I haven't been able to help. I mean, yes, I'm grateful for the 4,000 private clients I've had. My business is still doing well to this day, but I know I could be helping a lot more women, not just the ladies of Atlanta. And it doesn't help. I can only help one woman at a time. And my coaching rate is over $400 an hour, which means a lot of women can't afford me. So a few years ago, I started working on what was going to be my final project. This was going to be my legacy, something I could share with the world and hopefully leave a lasting impact. I took everything I learned from all the clients I'd worked with over the years, all the research I did, plus all the real-world feedback I got from thousands of now happily married women and devoted husbands fully bonded to them, 
and codified it into a simple and easy to follow program called The Bonding Stages, How Men Fall in Love. Inside this course, I'll show you exactly what each of the five stages are and how to spot each of them in a man. Plus what to do if they loop inside stage three and how to get them past it. Not knowing which stage your man is in is the number one state women can make that can seriously mess up what could have been an amazing relationship. I'll also reveal what it really means when a man says I love you during the adrenaline based stages one and two and why it's so damaging to believe him. It's not that they don't mean it. They even truly believe what they're saying, but they're not really in love with you the same way you may be with them. But most importantly, I'll talk about why every man must go through stage three in order to truly bond with you and how ignoring this can lead to breakups, divorce, cheating, or worse. And more importantly, the three death sentences that can irreversibly end any chance of your man bonding to you. Do not say them during stage three under any circumstances. Next, you'll discover the real reasons why good boyfriends or husbands suddenly show up late, delay returning calls, listen less often, forget promises, and check out, even if they've already bonded with you. The number one mistake nearly all women make that literally blocks a man from ever moving past stage three, stunting the relationship and leading to a slow decline and loveless relationship. How to quickly detect and get rid of toxic men, men who are forever stuck in stages one and two and can never bond with any woman. Avoid these men, period, and much, much more.